Chris Green from GreenforceTactical.com. We're here at the Holster Smiths DIY Lab, and today we're going to learn how to construct a taco style or fold over style holster with this prop gun. You can use your own gun, but there are prop guns available that already have all of the blocking done on them, so you don't have to fill any stuff on your gun. In order to accomplish this, we're going to need a few basic tools. We're going to need a razor knife so we can cut our kydex. We're going to need a ruler to figure out where to cut our kydex. We're going to need a hand drill for drilling some holes in the kydex. And we need a forming press in order to form the hot kydex around the molding prop. Are you ready? Let's begin. So, the first step in constructing the taco or fold over style holster is we're going to have to determine the size of the material or kydex that we're going to cut, heat, and use for this item. A rule of thumb is if you're making a taco holster, you should generally start out with an 8 inch by 8 inch piece of kydex. That will generally cover most of the things you're going to do. And the way you can make sure that that's going to work for you, this is for a particular one, it's for a Smith & Wesson shield. So I have great confidence that a 8 inch by 8 inch piece will work for that. But I'm going to show you what it looks like so you can confirm on your own. So I'm just making some marks at 8 inches here. And then I'm going to turn it this way. And I'm going to make some marks at 8 inches. And then I'm going to go all the way out here at the edge because I'm going to cut this piece into an 8 inch strip. I've just gone ahead and done the layout before I cut it in the other axis so that I don't have to worry about it once it's small. So when I'm cutting kydex, what I like to do is put my straight edge down on the textured side of the kydex. The first pass of the razor knife will be very light. All we're doing here is, determining, is, is making a path for the razor knife to follow in subsequent passes so that when you have quite a bit of pressure on it, and you lose fine motor control over it, you're not liable to wander off your line. It makes for a, a very nice score. So we'll put it right on the edge where the line is, on the edge of the, of the table. Press down on it. It'll break easily along that line. And we'll set that piece aside. Now we already have our 8 inch mark here from where I laid it out. So we'll just take the straight edge and put it on there. Again, really light on the first pass, a little stronger on the second, lots of pressure on the third. Now, so as we can see, this 8 inch by 8 inch piece will be more than adequate for covering both sides of the trigger guard of this MMP shield, and you have plenty of extra material past the muzzle and past the rear of the rear sights. So this will be 8, eight inch by 8 inch will be plenty fine for the Smith & Wesson shield. So the next step in this process is going to be to heat the kydex so that we can form it. Let's go heat some kydex. So the next thing we're going to do in the process of making this taco fold over style holster is we're going to heat the kydex in the toaster oven to between 305 and 325 degrees. I prefer to be somewhere in the middle, about 315. Now it's important to note, kydex has a textured side and a shiny side. We want to put the shiny side down on the rack, which is set in the middle of the toaster oven so as not to disturb any of this pattern that's going to be to the outside invisible. <laughs> so what we'll do, open the toaster oven cold, place the kydex in the middle of the middle rack, close the toaster oven, make sure it's set for about 320 degrees, and turn it on. So when we take temperatures from the outside of this, we're going to make sure that we open the door, otherwise we're just going to be reading the temperature of the glass. So make sure you directly measure the kydex inside the oven, not the glass. Let's talk about safety for a moment. We told you the kydex is going to be over 300 degrees when it comes out of the oven. It's important that you wear gloves. Otherwise, you won't hold on to that kydex for very long. And you'll drop it, and you'll have to start over. So always wear gloves, and be careful when you're handling the kydex. Don't let it flip around and get up on your arms or anything. Okay? So now that we've got our gloves on, we've got our prop gun set in the middle of our press. So we've got everything ready to go. When we get ready to fold the kydex, we're going to lay the kydex down here. We're going to push the gun into the fold, fold it over, and close the press. It's important that you know what you're going to do before you take the hot dex out of the oven. You want to know exactly what you're going to do from there to here so you don't waste any time. The more time you waste, the less definition you get because the kydex is, kydex is going to start cooling off immediately. And the cooler it is, the less definition it will take, the less soft it is. The, the more it's cooled off and become hard again. So let's take a quick temperature reading. 
And about halfway through, we're going to pull it out and spin it around to make sure we've got even heating. We're at 138 degrees, so we're a little less than halfway there. It's important to uh, keep your eye on the kydex. Don't shut the, the, the thing and go do anything else. Um, it's always been my experience that when you're heating kydex, you want to stay within arm's reach of the oven. Otherwise, you'll get distracted and you'll look over and smoke will be pouring out of it. It'll be terrible and you won't be able to use it. So always keep an eye on what you're doing. Don't wander off. And you want to sample the four corners and the middle. Make sure you're not getting any hot spots. We're up to 175 degrees, so a little over halfway to the goal. Another thing to look for when you're watching your kydex, watch the edges. The kydex, as it heats, the heat won't distribute evenly through the decks, so the edges will frequently roll up and then roll back down. They're starting to roll up just a little bit right now. You can see them coming off the rack. And that lets you know that the heat's starting to transfer through the kydex. When it lays back down, it has become equal most of the way through the kydex, and the kydex is relaxed. So let's take a quick sample and go ahead and plan on rotating it at this point. So we're at 245 degrees. You can see it's already a little soft. And we're headed for 300. So we'll let that sit for just a few, about another 30 seconds, 45 seconds, and we'll come back to it. It's always a good idea to put your rack exactly as close to the middle as you can get inside. You don't want it all the way down along the bottom because in the bottom it will be closer to the bottom heating element. The bottom will take heat quicker or all the way up at the top where it'll also it'll be closer to the top elements and it'll take heat quicker on the top. So put it right in the middle, let the hot air boil around in there and evenly heat both sides of the kydex at the same time and you'll get much better results. I can smell the second smell, which means we're getting close. We are at 291, so now's the time. We're in the short strokes. It won't be but another 10 or 15 seconds. It's a good opportunity to reconfirm that our prop gun is all ready to go for the mold. We'll walk over here, take our final reading, and go ahead and plan that if the readings are good, we're going to go ahead and pull it out and get to work. So let's look. 316 degrees in three places. Take our piece of kydex, lay it down in here, push the prop gun into it. Now you see we can hold it from the outside here while we get our press set. Okay, we're going to let this sit for about 15 minutes, and we'll be right back. Okay, it's been about 15 minutes. This thing should have cooled off the ambient, and we're going to go and open it up and see what we've got. We push down, pull the latch, stand it up. Oh, so pretty. So, when you're looking at the gun after you've done a mold, you want to ensure that you have good definition here and good definition here. These are the important parts because this is where you're going to get your retention, and these sides, on both sides, this is what's going to constrain the gun back and forth, and this line up here and this line right here on the bottom of the frame are going to constrain it fore and aft. So, now that you've got the shell molded and you've got it folded and it's cool, it's time to do some drilling. So let's go do some drilling. Okay, we're going to continue along now with the taco style holster that we molded for the Smith & Wesson shield. And in this case, we're going to just go ahead and drill two holes down here where we later hang a tuckable strut. So I'll just show you how the drilling goes and uh, give you some of the considerations. One of the most important things you need to realize is when you're, when you're drilling anything that's been a taco fold like this, you want to have the item that you molded it around inside so that it indexes the side front to back. If you don't have anything in here and you push down on it drilling it, what you'll tend to do is compress it and change the geometry between the top and the bottom layer. And when you put your eyelets in it, it will actually hold the holster out of alignment for the rest of its life. So to avoid doing that, a little pro tip is to go ahead and leave whatever you molded, whether it's a knife or a gun or a radio or a flashlight, put it back in there before you drill it, and it will hold the sides aligned for you while you're drilling in order to keep you from having that functional misalignment, okay? So let's go ahead and go down here, and I'll show you how this goes. 
So one of the things we need to consider is we want to be far enough away from the trigger guard here so that we can get hardware. And the other consideration is we don't want the strut to have to come straight up and down like this. We want it to come at a slight angle. So I'm going to lay out my second hole along this, this axis so that when the strut's put on it, it will be out of the way of your finger when you go to grip the gun. It won't be poking you in the hand. So now that I've got the first dot there where I'm going to put my first hole, I'm going to go ahead and drill that hole because that hole is free. And then we'll just go ahead and place our eyelet from the back side to the front side so that we can use it to secure our drill guide and we'll just swing it to where you can see the line up line inside there. So you're just going to put it like that, put a little quick clamp on it so it doesn't walk around on you, get it positioned exactly where you want it, and go ahead and drill that second hole. Hi, we're about halfway through the video, so I want to take a moment. If this seems like it's a little too much for you, or you just don't have the space, we'll be happy to build you a blaster scabbard or a knife sheath or whatever you'd like. Just hit us up on our website at greenforcetactical.com. Please follow us on Instagram, on Twitter, and on YouTube at Green Force Tactical. Again, we appreciate you watching, and enjoy the rest of the video. Thank you. when you get done, it'll look a little something like that. So you've got those two holes along that axis that'll allow you to go ahead and mount the strut. So we're going to go ahead and go over to where we're eyeliding, and I'll show you how that goes. So this is what it's going to look like, and we're going to go ahead and eyelet it up right there for you, okay? So let's meet over at the eyelet press. Okay, so now we're going to put some eyelets in this taco holster that we molded for the Smith & Wesson shield earlier. We're over here at the flaring press, and I'll show you how to insert the eyelets and get them flared correctly. So you have to decide which side of the holster is going to be the front or the back. This is a right-handed holster, which is the way I'm building it. We're going to put the finished side of the eyelets, the part that's already rolled, to the front. And we'll take another one and put it down there below it. Now on the back side, this is where all the work's going to take place. This is where the rolling is going to take place. So we're going to put that in the die with the rolling part up. And we're going to take the pre-rolled section right here and set it in the bottom die and move it around. And you'll feel it when it gets exact. Oh, there we go. Now when I move this around, I'm moving the whole plate. So it's, it's locked into the die. Now I'll just start advancing the top portion of the die until it comes down into the hole. And now I'll move the rig around a little bit and watch the handle here. You'll see it drops a little bit. I'll let you know you've got everything in line. And now you just go ahead and roll the eyelet. You repeat it for the other one. Find the die. Get it locked in the way you want it. Make sure everybody's happy. And then bring down the top part of the die. Rotate everything. Make sure everything's happy. And squish it. So. This is what the front side of it's going to look like. This is just our layout mark. Don't worry about that. And that's what the back side is going to look out. Next, we're going to go over to the saw, and we're going to go ahead and start establishing the final shape. So I'll see you at the saw. OK, now we're ready to go ahead and cut the final shape. So we're over here at the saw. This is our taco Smith & Wesson shield. So what we're going to do, always wear safety glasses. We're going to turn on the saw. We're going to start up here at the nose.
All right. So now we have the basic shape. And we'll go ahead and head over to the sander and finish this up and show you what the final shape looks like. Okay, here we are with the taco holster for the uh, Smith & Wesson shield that we molded. And we're going to go ahead and take it over here to the Kalamazoo grinder and go ahead and put the final, final shape to it. Okay, let's do that. So this is the final shape we're going to go for for our Smith & Wesson Shield appendix rig. Um, we've rounded all of the edges. We've cut off the bull nose here to take away that sharp spot. We've done a slash cut across the front, which makes it easy to find for reholstering. And we've clearanced it for your fingers so that when you reholster, it doesn't bite you right here. So I'm really happy with that. So this is where most people will stop. It's sanded smooth and the edges are round. Um, if you want to get into more advanced polishing techniques, we're going to have a video on advanced polishing techniques coming up. Be sure and tune in for that. But uh, this is Chris from GreenForceTactical.com reminding you to always be awesome and thanking you for watching our videos. And we invite you to come back and see us again soon.